episodes of The Anthony Rogers Show on Anthony Rogers TV on Roku and Fire TV. Also, cool smile videos. <laughs> Today is the 79th anniversary of D-Day. Thank you to all of the brave men and women that have came before us so that I can have a stupid cell phone podcast. God bless America. Thank you, veterans. Hey, it's about time we had this conversation. Do you want a beard like this? Or close to this? Or even half as good? Use luxurious bastard beard oil. Promo code LEGENDARY for a discount. 
and step your game up. Good interview, man. Good positive vibes. I appreciate you asking good questions. Yeah, hey, man, God bless you, man. For sure. A lot, of these, a lot of these interviewers are weird, man, but you're keeping it real, man. Yeah, man. You are now listening to the best show in the universe. The Anthony Rogers Show. You probably wish that this was your show. But it's not. It's the Anthony Rogers Show. Tell all of your friends to listen to this show. Oh, welcome back to the greatest show um, that's ever existed. How are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Dude, that, was a, that was a long intro, but that was a good song, man. Like, was a, <laughs> the song part was cool, man. Was, uh... I, I like I like when you uh, thanked everyone that's given their lives so that you could have a stupid cell phone podcast show. That was good. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Lots of people died for this show. Months. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. How are you doing, man? Doing good, man. I just gotta just sleep. Uh, I gotta do a bunch of stuff tomorrow, but, uh, but uh, today's pretty chill. <laughs> tomorrow's a big day, huh? It's tomorrow's gonna drive so far. Oh, um, so like, yeah, yeah. Do you want to call it that? But uh, we have a, we have a huge guest. Uh, he's, uh, Done a lot of stuff. Um, I found out he was actually uh, he toured with you guys at one point too. Like uh, I found out. Are you doing good? Yep. What's up, guys? What's up, John? How are you? I'm doing really well, man. Uh, appreciate you guys having me over here on this show. Dude, thanks for coming on to the stupid yeah, cell yeah. phone podcast yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're gonna test my swimming legs on a fucking on a podcast podcast because i haven't done one yet so i apologize now like if i say something crazy but i don't know what kind of show this is maybe it'll be perfect you know dude you're gonna do just fine you're gonna do just fine <laughs> oh I no think, it, i think i'll it, I'll consider it fine <laughs> yeah th this show is uh is about nothing and everything all at once so it, it doesn't there's no no rules no limits sounds good man I like your uh, your lighting in your studio. Your studio is called Red Rum. Uh, what? Red Room. It's Red Rum Studios, right? Oh, the Red it's Room. Red That's Room. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but it's all kind of it's all kind of themed. This shining. I got shining stuff everywhere in here. It's crazy. That's that's why I was thinking because I, I I was in your old the old version of your studio before you yeah. built your new your new uh, setup there, and I remember all the shining stuff everywhere. Yeah, this is the third version of the Red Room. The first one was just like. You know, I started with uh, Phil Taylor. We started recording people, and and he was like, "Dude, we need to we need to bring people in here to record." Because I was just recording myself to write stuff, and we started bringing people in. He's like, "What do you want to call it?" And I was like, "Well, I like the shining, so red room." I moved out of the house. The next room had to be red, and this one is like fully decked out. You should come in sometime. Nice. So did did Phil? Phil was the one that kind of when you were working with him. That's when you first started stepping out into the the production role. Yeah, pretty much, man, because, you know, I, I did it so much like for myself going back and forth with Ben and Carly and everybody because we're always so displaced. You know? um, I got really good at doing it just for my stuff. And, you know, Phil's a hustler, dude. I mean, I don't right. know if he's going to see this, but yeah, that's 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 his thing. So it's like, dude, let's bring people in here. And I wouldn't say that I was proud of a lot of those early recordings, but I was just kind of feeling it out, you know. Um, I can do way better with myself, but recording other people is a lot more difficult. But uh, nice. Now it sounded really good, though. I feel like oh, I'm sure, good. dude. You got you yeah. you got to start somewhere with everything, and then then you hone your craft, right? Yeah, and then apologize to all those people that I recorded early on. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Just like with anything else. Yeah. So, so um, you go so to St. Louis. You go. Did you go to? I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. You go to St. Louis to record your stuff, right? Is it Springfield? Or I St. do. Louis or something? Okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a studio um, up there that I've been going to since like 2017 ish, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a good it's just a good situation overall. You know how like recording is. It's like 
yeah. um, certain rooms feel right to you and, and, uh, certain engineers feel, feel right to you. And it and, sounds uh, like I, it does. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like a, it's, it's just a really comfortable situation. I, I click well with the engineer it, it, and, and he's the studio owner and, uh, an engineer. We, we just work, we just work easy together. So it, it feels more like yeah. casual and just going in there cracking jokes and hitting record and, and, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a good little good little situation, you know. Is that where Black Pilled was recorded? Yep. Yeah, dude. So I, I would just say, don't go anywhere else. Don't do it. <laughs> you know. Oh, that, th- thanks, dude. I, it sounds everything that comes out of there that it seems like you're doing from there sounds so freaking good, man. I, like, you know, the, I, listen, the, I listen. I literally listen to that shit all the time. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, the the uh, the, the, the dude Brian. Um, he's, he's great. And, and the studio itself is, is great. And he's got a, a lot of gear too. You know, he's, he's, uh, fast with it and, and, uh, knows the, the shortcuts and the tricks and, and, uh, so, you know, like, like you said, don't, don't fix it if it ain't broken. So yeah. it's a good, he's good setup. Guy. Like, he's got, a, he's got a lot of outboard stuff or is, is he like inside the Pro Tools world or? No, I don't mean to go off on the whole studio thing, but you know. No, dude, that's what that's what we're doing yeah. here, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, he 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 actually is good at dabbling in both. You know, he's got he's got all the in in the box shit, but I mean, yeah. he, he's he's got a crazy crazy collection of of uh, of tons of of analog shit and and you know, guitar pedals and old vintage amps, old vintage guitars. What um, are you singing into when you're in there? Oh, you know what, dude? I think that you asked me that before, and I yeah, told you I'd find out, and I didn't. It's crystal clear, man. Yeah, well, I forgot that you said that, but damn you, I can't believe it, man. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll, 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 I'll shoot him a text, and I'll, yeah. I'll get that. I'll get that information for you because it is a really nice, nice mic. I just, I wish I could remember. It's not like that Neumann one. That, you know, that, I'm not interested in like duplicating his chain. I'm just curious, man, because like whatever you're using is is very crystal clear man like his chain his whatever he's using outboard gear or whatever with that microphone is like he's got you dialed the fuck in you know and yeah it yeah cool. no it, it's definitely a good a good mic and and like i was I, I don't think it's that crazy expensive neumann one that a lot of people use it's something something not yeah. not quite as expensive but it's still something a great, affordable yeah that's what i still do. a great mic yeah this time so, uh, drums in there yeah, yeah, there's, um, you know. I didn't know if he, got, like, sends them to you or whatever because he sends me drums all the time. What? Oh, Ty? Yeah, yeah, that's I'll say. Yeah. Does he do the drums there or does he send you stuff that he records at his house? Yeah, no, we, we um, he trains down from Chicago down to St. Louis. And, uh, okay, yeah. And uh, the, the studio, Firebrand, where, where we track, it's, you know, it's got a, a, a large live room. And, and we'll just set up the drums in there. And, and yeah. obviously the first few days we just bash those out. And then uh, he's got, um, you know, some, some smaller rooms for the guitar cabs and a, like a smaller yeah. vocal booth and all that. But we, we track everything there. Although Ty has told me he's been doing some stuff with you like that, where he just tracks it at his, at his place and sends it over. Yeah. I mean, he knows how to record his stuff. I don't know what he's using microphone wise. And of course it doesn't sound like this room or it doesn't sound like a big room necessarily, but he sends me like, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight different takes for one song. It's like, he calls them celebration takes. And and those are usually the ones I end up using because he just goes crazy on it. Uh, Nice. It's, it's so impressive. Like it's so easy to work with, with stuff like that with anything really, but it's like, hey man, would you do this for me? You start doing these drums or whatever, and he starts sending them to me. And it's like, oh, uh, here's uh, two warm ups, four takes, three celebration takes, and that's a lot of stuff to like sift through. But they sound good. He's really good. At that. He's like a fish in the yeah. fucking water. Yeah, he's a, he, he's a joy to work with. You know. Yeah. Does he still fucking eat like uh, goldfish all the time on the tour bus? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's he's moved on. He's moved on from, from that to to other to other funny things. So he's got bigger um, fish to fry. He's got <laughs> these days. He's frying much bigger fish. Yeah, but um, 
you know, I'm trying to think of his preferred snack. <laughs> and yeah. I guess there's not there's not just one focused on snack anymore that I could that I could really recall. So it's more diversified. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> you probably yeah. have more room. You know? Yeah. <laughs> to get less guys, you get more room. You can be diversified with the food. You know. That's right. <laughs> Actually, a Anthony just came out on the road with us for a couple of days, just a couple, oh, just yeah. a few days ago, and and uh, he got to he got to the the full experience to hang with us for a couple of days out there. <laughs> hey, let's go eat. <laughs> you know, let's find a cool place to eat. Dude, we were gonna stop. We were we were heading from uh, Omaha to uh, St. Louis, and we were gonna swing by Kansas City and get Joe's Kansas City barbecue, but. Man, um, it was a yeah. it was a Sunday and they were closed, um, so then we were gonna we we're gonna hit up Q thirty nine instead because they were open. But uh, we ended up that drive was so long we ended up not really having the time to stop. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't we didn't eat too many too many good things unfortunately. Yeah. I'm going there tomorrow. I'm going to Kansas City tomorrow. I might try some places over there. I don't know. Dude, stop at Joe's, man. If you if you can. <laughs> Those ribs, I'm telling you, those ribs at, at Joe's, those ribs are they're my those are my favorite ribs. Can you park there like with like our like our Boston shit? Uh, okay, so so now there's there's the original the, there's the original Joe's Kansas City barbecue, which is in a gas station like in in the middle of the city, and there's there's a Walmart neighborhood market directly across the street, so you can go there and you can park in that Walmart parking lot and walk across the street. But that Sweet. particular Joe's gets so crowded. Um, I would, I mean, if you get there after like 1130, the line wraps like <clears throat> around inside the building and then goes out the door and way up the street. Not so, serious. so there's, there's a couple other locations that are on the outskirts of town and they have, they're more in like shopping centers and the food is the same. So I would suggest, hey, what was that one that you took me to where we had a, like they, they only do it like one day a week or a couple of days a week and they only start at a certain time? Was that in Arkansas? Oh, are you in Conway, you right? Me, I think it was in Conway. Yeah. It's like you guys are like, we have to get here at this time or else you're not getting no barbecue. Man. That's that yeah, fire, yeah. Dude. Yeah, that that that's a good spot too. It, it's that was a hog pen. Yeah, that's what in, it was. In, in Conway, Arkansas. And that's just like a one off family, family run business and I, I yeah, think they were only open job. like like three days a week or something. <laughs> For a couple hours, like until they sell everything, you know? Yeah, they sell <laughs> it all out and then they just shut it yeah. down. That's, that's, that's a great business plan. Right yeah, it's like two hours a day. You're just like, it's a great business. We have to cook it, I guess. Yeah. It. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a pretty cool business model, you know, if you can get by just being being that, you know, whatever about shit. Yeah, yeah. But, just get and, it whenever yeah. I can do it. That's that's when you get it. Is whenever I feel yeah, like you, you get what I and get. After that, after that, you're a fuck. You're not having no barbecue until I say so again. You know that's, <laughs> that is that's, that's Arkansas right. though. That's totally Arkansas. It's great. Yep, you gotta love it, dude. Dude, uh, I was just noticing. I think all three of us have some pretty, pretty nice looking uh, beards going on here these days. I was noticing that. I looked up. The, I started looking at some dudes in Anthony shorts and stuff, and uh. I was like, oh shit, man, we're gonna get the beard to clean up in here. Just, yeah. Maybe these little stripes yeah. though. Look, look how it grows today. I look, I look like I should be playing in Motown or something with this. Those are some <laughs> nice little gray streaks right there you got. Yeah, this is perfect. But you know, if you could see me with the light on though, you wouldn't even be able to see those lines. It'd just be all scraggly fucking fucked up. Are, I had to are cut, you still, are, are I had John, to cut tree limbs down your... just so that we could do this fucking podcast, man. Like we're in here tracking the base. I'm like, man, I got to do this podcast. And I don't know if I live in the country, dude. I thought it was going to be like so remote. I wouldn't be able to see the picture. And I was like, all right, let's see. Well, I've got, it's because I live in the country and my building is up from my house. It's about 700 feet away from my house. I had to put one of those little fucking, you know, antennas out there that send the fucking Wi-Fi up here. And all the leaves grew in on the trees <laughs> since I fucking put that there. So I had no internet. So I, right before this, I had to go like cut a bunch of limbs down and trees and shit. <laughs> just so Holy I could be on here, yeah. That's so a lot of speaking of Arkansas, yeah. And, that, yeah, yeah. and, and I probably and I'm saying because I probably got sawdust in my shit right now, but you don't see it. 
Yeah, your 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 property is pretty cool. I've I've been out there. You still uh you still shoot out there and whatnot? I mean, whenever I see a snake, yeah. <laughs> I don't. Whenever you need I mean, to or want shoot. to. Huh? Well, whenever the kids say, "Hey, Dad, I think there's a snake out here," and then I go and I look and it's like a huge water moccasin just chilling, ready to fucking bite them. I'm like, "Yep, that's a fucking snake." So I have to go get my. Yeah, I usually take my shotgun for that though. I tried to use my nine for a while, but I kept missing the fucking snake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the shoddy's a little better for that job. Yeah, man, I didn't even have one. You know, one of my hip hop artists gave it to me for some studio time. I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude, I'll take that." Does it got any bodies on it though? He's like, "Man, I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> Does it have the serial number scratched off and shit? Man, it doesn't. But I, I was talking to him because, like, when he gave it to me, the firing pin was kind of fucked up. So. He had given me he had given me uh, shells as well, and I was like, "Let's go shoot this thing in the backyard and see how it works." And it kept every third shot; it wouldn't shoot, right? And uh, I was like, "Oh, the fire right. fucked up, right?" So you know, we're sitting there talking about it and stuff, and so I'm, I'm talking to him. I was like, "Well, what have you been doing to this gun because it's someone's kind of fucked up about it?" And he said, like, "Oh man, we clean it all the time." I was like, "Okay," and uh, I don't clean guns. I'm not a gun dude, but I don't think this has anything to do with cleaning a gun. What you're selling. Me. He goes, uh, they take it all apart and they put it in the bathtub. <laughs> they put it in some water what? in the bathtub. Yeah. That's what he That's said. how they clean it? That's what he was telling me, yes. And yeah, I was that's, like, that's not that that's not right. I was just, you know, I mean he was a, he's a friend, so I was kind of more like I didn't want to just be like, man, that's that's fucking weird, dude. Because I like I said, I don't clean guns, but I know it doesn't include that. And uh Right. I just kind of like just went along with it. Like maybe he knows some shit I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, always something no. to learn. Yeah, that's probably why the gun only fires every third shot. But I can still get the snake though, because he doesn't really move. Yeah, at least but. the snake doesn't have a gun to shoot back. You know, you can you got yeah. time. Dude, these motherfuckers are aggressive out here, though, man. These really? Moccasins. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's probably I think it's known as yeah, an aggressive ass snake. But until you encounter them, I don't know how many you've encountered, but over here, I, it's Moccasin Creek. It's behind my house. That's the name of the creek. So there's fucking wire moccasins everywhere. Anyways, they'll come oh, after shit. you, man. And they'll jump their whole body, like, length just to get to you, no matter what. If they want to fucking bite you, and they're gross. They stink. That sounds, that sounds terrifying, dude. It is terrifying. And I let my kids play out here all the time. I'm like, hey, man, I made it this far. You know, you get out there and deal with that real shit out there with them snakes you know you gotta you gotta learn how to live i guess you know that's right man it builds character dude <laughs> but i don't want them to get fit though so yeah they, always, they got they got a good eye they always show me. how old are those guys now uh eight and nine and uh holy shit yeah, yeah i mean you remember them they remember the fuck out of you dude uh they love oh yeah them. i remember them yeah, dude. It's like, let's listen to Sean. Let's listen to Sean. I was like, man, fucking no. I don't want to listen to that. You know? <laughs> it's like, I've been listening to it for fucking months now. Um, no, I'm just playing. Um, no, they're super talented, man. Like, Cash is taking a play in the drums. He's actually got his own drum kit in here. Uh, really? Yeah. And I've always just kind of, like, hit the drums if they're around me. Rocky used to get pissed off at me. He's like, don't, don't fucking hit my drum. But... You think being around drums your whole life, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna play them. So, but I've never like tried to learn how to play the fucking drums, you know. So I took the opportunity to literally start trying to learn them myself, like properly, you know. And so yeah. I can show him because he's taking so much interest in it. And uh, dude, it's paid off like dividends, like crazy, man. Because we just sit in here, his drum sets right over by mine. We'll put like some Twenty One Pilots or something on the the thing and. We'll both just play 21 Pilots and we'll go back and forth. And uh, I can come here and jam with him. Like, he likes to play Master of Puppets on the drum. And he wants me to play Master of Puppets. I'm like, oh shit, man, that's from my old. That's, I grew up with that shit, you know? <laughs> it so, it yeah. sounds like some good bonding, man. Oh, dude, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, yeah. love, I love my relationship with these boys, man. They, they've, they've changed the fuck out of me. You know? They're great, <laughs> dude. That, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I, I can relate. My my daughter is now jamming the piano a little bit. She's six. Yeah. And, yeah, I was uh, going to ask you about her, man. She was so adorable. Yes, yeah, and she was I, she was real little back when, yeah, uh, she was. Back, yeah, back when you saw her. Yeah, you around and shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and now she's said, six. Like four, and she's, four years ago? Right. Yeah, at least. 
at least. Because I, I think I moved, I moved up to Northwest Arkansas four years ago now, so it had to have been before that. But uh, she jams out on the piano, and and she she drags me into the piano room, and and has you know has me show her new songs all the time. Then she sits and practices them, and she even uh, she you know she's only doing like one you know one note lines, melodies, or what and whatnot. But then she just all of a sudden started adding like a drone note all on her own yeah, to a yeah. couple of songs. That's, that's the thing. That's what you're looking for, man. That's when my kids, like they take an initiative to either be creative with it. Somehow I yep. can see how they're putting their personality into it. And it happens all the time. Like, I mean, I ain't saying my kids are like, oh, they're fucking amazing. I see kids on YouTube that are their age that are getting like millions of views and shit. But to me, they're doing what their age can do or, or whatever. But, but Cash, his initiative is like, he seems like a teenager sometimes. Uh, he's nice. very logical and understanding, yeah. but he loves he loves affirmation. You know, like both of them do actually, but the cash response to it is so severely. Like if you tell him, "Hey, man, what you're doing or what you're thinking or whatever, whatever you're talking about is that's really cool." Man, you should really you know continue with that. I I love hearing that from you. And he takes that stuff and it's like goes into a vault, man. It's like that's that's it forever. It's like all right, I can always talk to this dude about whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, I yeah. didn't even know. A, I didn't even know like a father-son relationship could be like that, honestly. And I have another son who's older. I didn't. I just never realized. It. But, uh, that's, that's great, man. About your little girl, though. I'd like, I'd like to. I'd love to see her again. Man. She's cute. Yeah, she's she's a crazy one at this point. She's got a lot of sass, and uh, she busted in. She busts in on our our podcast sometimes, and she like yeah. We're 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 doing an episode, and she picked the lock on the door, and then came in. It was like, you need to make me a sandwich. She was like bossing me around <laughs> and telling me to make her food and shit. Dude, it, I, was, was, I was expecting the boys to come doing that in the studio because they just bust in here all the time. Even if I got paying like clients and shit. But right. everybody loves They don't me, give right? a shit. Yeah. So I kind of expect them to do it, but I told them, I was like, please don't do it tonight. You know, just please don't. But I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll literally have the hip hop like gangsta thug rappers in here. They, you know, all cool guys. My my kids will be out here sitting next to him, man, and like the rappers are all telling him stuff like, "Hey, man, go tell your mom to give me some Chick Fil A and stuff like that." And then <laughs> and then Cash is going down to the house saying, um, "Mom, can we go get some Chick Fil A?" <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she didn't know what he's talking about. She's like, "Why the fuck did you come up with Chick Fil A all of a sudden?" And then the next day she tells me he's asking her for Chick Fil A. It's like, man, you need to stop hanging out with these rappers, dude. They're trying to get free <laughs> shit from you. <laughs> <laughs> tell him, tell him to go boss around their mom and shit. Yeah, dude. He was playing. Uh, he was actually came up here. Me, and, my wife came home from work, and she and I went out to go talk to her. I had some some hip hop guys in here, and um, so we leave. Cash comes up. He comes in here. I was like, all right, I'll be right back. We come back, and the drums are playing. We can hear the drums, and uh, me and my wife come through the door, and there's rappers like standing around his drum kit with him playing like. Hey, we want some pussy. They're singing two live crew and he's playing the fucking beat. They're standing oh all around gosh. him singing two live crew. And we're just like, oh my God, this is either the coolest thing in the world or the most fucked up thing I've ever seen. We're definitely not going to get parent awards, man. You know, kids play drums at fucking two live crew with a bunch of hip hop guys. But, you know, they love him. <laughs> he's cool. <laughs> at least they're getting like life lessons, you know, they're, they're, they're getting experience. Absolutely. I love it. I mean, I ain't fucked up about it. I, if, I, if I have to tell the principal or somebody about it, I'll tell them. Okay. Yeah, there you go. You know, it's a it. <laughs> you have an unusual job, and it it and it comes t comes to school with them a little bit here and there. Absolutely. Do you, so are you doing like a a a, a ton of hip hop guys these days? Uh, it was because of the pandemic. Like my studio has always been. I've never promoted. It's never. I've never. I don't even think about it like that. I think about like this is just my spot. And sometimes I talk to people who want to come record at my spot, you know. Um, and it's been pretty well like that. You know, I don't make a, a killing or anything like that, but um, it's it's income. But then the pandemic happened, dude. It's like people couldn't travel here, you know. And I don't get, a, I didn't get a lot of local uh, artists or talent. And then the pandemic hit, nobody wanted to go anywhere, man. So I was like, I'm just gonna open up the hour and see what happens. And as soon as I did, man, the hip hop guys like. Hey man, you got an hour? <laughs> you know, gotta get an hour right now. I just, I had to get up at like two in the morning. Yeah, man, I got, I got time. 
<laughs> Dude, I, um, the the guys that I that I usually work with uh, up in St. Louis, they do a lot of hip hop guys too, and they have some fucking hysterical stories they tell me. Um, yeah, me that, and and <laughs> one of the things that they always talk about is that these hip hop guys come in, and they're just like, yeah, go, they, like go to this YouTube link and just download that beat. That's and they, that's how I yeah, that's how I would have to do it. And it sucks sometimes because that's like because I live in the country, it takes forever to download that thing. And they're like, How, "Is this coming off my hour?" Because I'm waiting on this song. <laughs> I'm like, no. They they, they want it to not even... come off their hour. It, oh, it, they the do because they talk... think it's like, you know, they think it's my job to, you know, have the music ready, bitch, on a YouTube link. And then I got to go to another thing to rip it illegally, <laughs> you know. The, com the comment just says, what is this show about? <laughs> <laughs> it's about John talking about stupid shit. That's what it is. <laughs> three, three bearded dudes just shooting the shit. Oh, I yeah, mean, dude, it's... you got a beard company, man. Anthony, I saw that little promo at the beginning. I didn't know that. You got, like, beard wax, beard balm? What do you got? Oh, it's a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, Is it your good. stuff or you just sponsor it? No, it's just uh, luxurious bastards. Like a uh, big... Okay. Company sponsor. Shit, I thought you yeah, were making just, that stuff, man. That's gonna be a whole nother conversation because I make that stuff. Yeah, I was I was gonna ask you if you're still doing that. Kinda. I don't I don't promote it. So I mean I do get some sales here and there, but it's like it's it's a cool thing, man, but I just don't have time. You know? uh, I make yeah. enough for myself though. Like yeah, I, that's that's all I like the soap and all that stuff, dude. Freaking I haven't bought a bar of soap in like, I don't know, ten years now. You're still making the soap, huh? Yeah, dude, because I love it, man. It's fucking, it, especially for my beard, dude. Like, if I use any kind of shampoo or soap or anything from the store on this, man, dude, it's like, you know? I'm yeah. It just Are you still making, like. you still making that lip balm, too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't make that much because I don't sell much of it, but it's great, though, yeah. My wife still has a couple of those little little lip balms, dude, and she still swears by them. But I guess, That's you know, awesome. she... She obviously doesn't go through them super, super fast because, but uh, she loves them and she's got like, I think one yeah. or two left. I know I was up supposed it. to get, you got some more soap. I, I remember we were actually supposed to do that. Yeah, I'll have to put in a, I'll have to put in an order soon. I'll slept on it, but you know, take your time. I'm not, I'm going to have to make some more. Because <laughs> I keep using all that shit. Nice. Dude, so uh, what, what's going on with, uh, with we are the fallen aren't you are you, are you guys doing some are you guys yeah. doing any dates or have anything coming up no man uh that was a deal it was at the end of the pandemic they they asked us to come do that um ship rock or whatever and we oh, were okay. gonna do it and we and we had literally had not played together in it was almost exactly 11 years since our last show that we see we haven't even seen each other and uh, we were gonna do that but man there's so much fucking jumping through the hoops with the pandemic bullshit. Like to get on that boat, like yeah, and they were literally telling me, man, we can't tell you to fake some documents, but just fake some documents, you know. And I was like, man, I'm on it. I was gonna do that in the first place, but uh, we ended up not doing it. Um, I think Carly went and Marty went, and none of the rest of us went. To it. So um, that would have been a kickoff for us to start doing some stuff together, right? It it threw such a ripple into everything that's like just getting like together enough that I literally saw Ben Moody. He came to my house. I haven't seen that dude in fucking 11 years. He shows up. I'm like, okay, he is alive, you know? And he was here. So that was like the most promising aspect of something maybe happening again. But because of it didn't happen, you know, it's just like it just really threw us all of the two chaos again. So then it's like, man, it just fell off. And it sucks, man, because it's weird. Oh, it's a joke. Yeah, and I've I've got shit tons of music that I can contribute to it, or I can write some more. It's like, damn it. So there's there, there's no crazy. there's no. Sorry, do what? I was just saying, life is just crazy like that. You know, it's like yeah. no matter how much you can try to make something work like that, there's always something that comes into it. It's like, fuck, man. you know. Yep, life's a trip, dude. So I wish I could say we had something really awesome coming out. Man. I know people will be like, oh fuck yeah, dude. We're the phone. Come to Brazil, man. Come to Brazil. <laughs> so are you are you working on any on any bands personally right now or are you just doing the studio thing these days? 
Uh, no, yeah, I'm not personally playing. Um, I came real close in the last three weeks to playing rhythm guitar for a country artist. Uh, really? And he's not blown up yet. Yeah, he's not blown up yet necessarily, but he did a beautiful record in Nashville. It's Jeremy Allen Jones. And uh, he's, he's, you know, he's going to do some songs while he's back. He's just kind of taking a break after he made the record. So. And it's not really my forte, but it just felt like it might be right for me at the time, the way it came at me and, and how circumstances seem. And I was like, I don't know right. if I have time, but if I can make the time for it, I would love to do it. Um, but then I discovered over the next week or two that that I can't, I just can't make it work time wise. But uh, uh, Jeremy Allen Jones is the dude's name, and he did some stuff with uh, I can't remember his last name, the producer named Sergio something. Uh, I think he's producing serious people. And, uh, that's the closest I've come to playing in a band, though. You know, like, yeah, you know, I just decided not to. It's just time and kids, and you know, everything well, dude, that that's a bit. It's, it's, it's hard with the little ones, you know. I mean, it's, it's definitely, I mean, I know. Wrenching myself away from home with my six-year-old is is definitely getting more and more difficult with her being older and understanding and you know missing missing me and shit. It, it's definitely you know the the idea of chilling at home and 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 recording people and stuff. That's that's not too shabby right there, you know. Well, it totally is because, like I said, they do come in here, and I don't try to make them feel like. Uh, Get out of here, man. Get out of here. This is daddy's. You know what I mean? It's like, fucking yeah. Dude, come on. Be here. Be a, be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. We got, I mean, I would have loved that shit, you know, growing up. I would have been like, damn. But my dad's got a really cool fucking thing up there, but he won't let me come in, you know? <laughs> you know, yeah. that shit happens too, but um, yeah. I just noticed that your, your tag says the unicorn. <laughs> yeah, nice. because I don't ever. I don't ever, well, I don't mean it like I'm the unicorn, like I'm some badass dude or a cartoon or anything. I mean it because this is probably one of the first opportunities for somebody, a lot, a lot of people to go, man, that motherfucker is still alive. Holy shit. I haven't <laughs> seen him or heard of him in years. <laughs> you know, like, if you don't follow me how on long? Instagram, then you probably would think I'm dead, you know. <laughs> how, how long has it been? So what, what, what was the last uh, record that you did with Evanescence? Oh shit, 2000. Well, I left the band in 2007. The record was like, 2007. Yeah, yeah. Was uh, that after the the second record? Yeah. Well, after technically the third record, the the live album, the live oh, okay. album. Um, yeah, it was after all those three records. And yeah, I didn't have anything to do with anything after that. I'm yeah. just sad about it too. I'm fucking sad about it. <sighs> so so. <laughs> Tell everybody what that was. What that was like being. I mean, that that was like a phenomenon when that I was when you guys this came conversation out. was going to go there. It was, dude. Like, uh, just recently. I mean, don't get me wrong, man. I have a lot of uh, pride and good feelings about everything that was contributed and what it's done for my life and the people that were involved. I love everybody there, man. But everything going sour like that just makes it such a weird thing because it's still going, right? And I'm thankful as fuck i'm like that's beautiful man it's still going it's like what a what a brand you know um yeah but then you look back on things that were done or, or what's going on in your life and you look at it in a certain kind of way it's like is this <laughs> i don't know exactly what i'm trying to say uh is it something that people should be bitter about you know because i see a lot of bitterness like with a, a lot of fans and stuff like that um there's no bitterness coming from my end at all. And it seems like there's a lot of speculation that there is. And so I kind of stay away from the whole fucking thing, you know, like don't investigate it or listen to the records or, or whatever, because it's like, if I get pulled into it, it's like immediately people are acting like it was yesterday that I was in the band. And I'm like, it seems like yesterday, but that was like, what, 12, 13, 14 years ago. <laughs> I mean, that's a long time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh I, I get what you're saying. You just you just kinda move on and do your thing, but you gotta be proud of, of the accomplishments, you know. It's absolutely I'm I'm definitely. thankful. I, I this is the way my life was supposed to go, and that was a huge part of that. I couldn't be sitting here talking I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you or have enjoyed playing bass for your band on a tour if that hadn't happened. 
And like that, one of that, you know, doing that with you was one of the things that I, yeah, but I'm happy to talk I got to do that. It was just a platform for all kinds of, there's so many situations like, like that. You know, like even, you know, not even about doing anything big, it's just people that actually trust me because I've done that and they know that I'm not bullshitting anybody and not trying to be like, oh yeah, I'm this fucking guy. All this stuff. Uh, I have a lot of people who really understand and trust me and they're going to make music and it makes it even more beautiful. So if it hadn't been for all that, man, shit, I wouldn't be able to do this. I'd be, you know, delivering milk still <laughs> or landscaping or something. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of different paths that yeah. could have been uh, less enjoyable, you know. I mean, I did those paths too, so they're all fine, you know. <laughs> I just don't want wait, to wait, wait. Get... Lecomte performed lead vocals for Kill System. Were, were you oh, were shit. you the lead singer for Kill System? Kill System. Yeah, man. <laughs> wait, wait, you look like you're about you like you just got some juice right now. <laughs> yeah, well, band Cody, the producer, up. just just put up uh put up a little thing I didn't even know about, so I was just just curious. It, well, you know, the thing about Kill System was it, it wasn't anything that was put out really, or it was something that Rocky and I were doing uh, before the Evanescence. I mean, it's like while I was going through the Evanescence thing, I was playing with them, but I was doing a few other things. Rocky and I started this band called Kill System, and he'd always been a drummer and always been a guitar player, so I was like, he wanted to write music and play the guitar. And, he, and, you know, I was like, against my better judgment at the time, like, I'll be the singer, man. I'll sing. Dude. That'd be cool. And, and, you know, the stuff we came up with is cool. It's for some reason, it, and it was recorded very poorly on my PC way back then. The stuff we were talking about earlier. It is, it hurts your ears to listen to it. Man. <laughs> it's so compressed. Um, nice. But they were like, they were playing it on the edge or it was called Lick. I think back then was the radio station. Uh, three o'clock. The Little Rock Thursday. Station. Yeah, like three o'clock on Thursdays. That dude, Treetop, whatever Treetop Taylor, whatever his name was, the DJ. He loved that fucking nice. song called "Beautiful Emotion." He played on the radio, and it just—it was so weird to me because it was so poor quality. <laughs> they were playing anyways, but it—it it it really resounded with a lot of people, which is why I'm seeing this question, uh, or not question, the statement. Who, who pulled this? That's statement awesome. Is this, is this from a chat, or is this something that you guys? investigate uh, remember remember cody that was on here when you when you first logged on oh the, the first okay yeah 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 he, he he's the producer and and so he he puts up these little bubbles of information down oh. on the bottom as we go okay and, uh, See, so, i didn't even i didn't even think to ask i thought he's just gonna show up in a minute i thought he was like another guest like oh he'll be here in a little while john shut the fuck up we got cody yeah no no he's <laughs> he's he's just doing all the behind the scenes professional Thanks, shit man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Did you like Kill System? I still got some burned copies if you want one. Oh, there you go. Throw them up on your internet shop, dude. They're actually on, I think they're on YouTube, and it still has the same little cover that Rocky made in, like, uh, some cheap little Photoshop thing. It's it's great. And we, we did the, we actually did the photo shoot at home. We were, like, holding, like, a, just a lamp up each other's face real close to take the picture. Because <laughs> you couldn't, you photo, you couldn't do all that, like, saturation and shit, so we just have these stupid lamp pictures on the on the cover. You gotta get it done somehow. I did. <laughs> Shit. So so tell us how the whole machina thing came along. Um that was uh, uh my old drummer for a band I was in called Mind Rage a long time ago. We had been broken up for quite a while and I'd been off doing the evidence thing for a long time, whatever. And uh I never really talked to him. He's my drummer Chad. And he hit me up and said, hey, man, I got the, the dude from Future Leaders, man. I'm going to play drums for him. And I was thinking, you haven't played, played drums in a long time, but well, let's check it out, man. So he brings him around. He, he was actually talking about um, taking Chad with him as the drummer because I guess he just lost his drum and killed it. And, uh, but he came to my house, man, and uh, I invited him to my house. I'm like, man, I, I dig what you're doing. I like that one song, and, and he played some Tootsie guitar stuff, and it was really cool. And it was it was an awkward relationship at the beginning because I'm a very focused, like look you in there, your eye type of the first the type of person who just talk to you about stuff, and it feels more like you know just kind of looks away and stuff. So it was it was a crazy dichotomy. But he didn't leave my house for like three years. So 
And while he was there, man, we just wrote music like we would stay up all night long to write stuff. And we'd get so involved with it that we'd both be just dead, but like we couldn't stop fucking with it because it was just so fun, you know. Um, it wasn't trying to like make the best song in the world so we could be rich and go back to being famous or whatever. Um, it was no shit like that. It was just me and this dude making some cool music together, like doing something that felt very different than what I'd been known for. You know, uh, a lot more of the grunge style, you know, old school, like almost like Alice in Chains kind of shit, but a little bit. Yeah. And then you had, uh, did, did you guys ever sign a deal with that or, or was, were, was, were you just pushing that independently? <laughs> well, that was, that was at the point in time when I kind of realized how everything works and how it was broken, you know, cause it broke, it got broke a long time ago. And we still right. believe that, you know, it's like we, even we are the fallen new better, but we still went and got a, a deal with, you know, the universal Republic. Um, and it was just a shit deal, you know? So we tried yeah. to do stuff with uh, Machina, and we're like, dude, we're gonna keep, we paid for, we paid for all of it. I mean, we, we actually spent about $150,000 on the book. We didn't spend that money. People who really cared about us ended up spending that money. Because right. we were being had. Um, but it ended up getting done, and it's like one of the coolest things that I've ever done, you know? Uh, I feel like it's, because it has that old school sound, it's still kind of timeless because of that. Like we could literally take it and put it out again and people will probably be like, oh shit, this is new. You know what I mean? But yeah. as far as like having record deals or whatever with that one, it just ended up being some stupid fucking thing that I told Bill was a bad idea in the first place. And <laughs> there's some people in like California, I forget the name of the label, I guess I wouldn't say it if I did. I probably would say it if I could remember the name of the label. Um, we paid for everything. They were supposed to distribute it and do all this stuff, and they didn't sell shit. They didn't do nothing. They didn't make nothing. They didn't do nothing. And then they hit yeah. us up. They hit us up like talking about we owed them money. Right. <laughs> I don't think and, so. And then I called the dude. I was like, "Listen, man, I don't know you shit. I don't ever want to hear another call from you. I don't want to ever speak to you again. If I hear if you saying anything." About us owing you money anywhere or give me any shit about it. I'm gonna come to California to your fucking house and then we'll do it. And I haven't heard from him since then. We don't owe him <laughs> money. I'm not tough. I'm not trying to say I'm tough, but I was like, dude, that's just so wrong. Like we pay hundred fifty thousand dollars for a record. We let you do the distribution and stuff, and then you don't do shit and say I owe you money. Fuck you, man. I'll I'll strangle you. you well, know? and, and cl clearly the guy doesn't realize like how it works i mean that's that's part of the yeah. record company's role is that they they take a risk like you don't like if, if the record company doesn't recoup their money it doesn't come out of your pocket as an artist that they have to recoup exactly. their money from uh, from sales you know it's There's, it's uh yeah there was nothing to recoup for this guy he had a free record to fucking distribute and just make money that's it that's all i right. do is make money you know yeah. universal republic i you know what this is just some small thing that you just you know you come across these little labels all, all the time i do especially with my clients because i call them snakes on the playground man these are the people that they troll for bands and, and try to sell them something that sounds legit whenever i already knew who it wasn't but phil was like oh let's do this let's do this let's do this let's do, let's do, go for every fucking thing and i see them all the time it's like you can see them from a mile away dude but then there's universal republic that's a real label and just because we didn't come out of the gate selling stuff like just gangbusters, you know, that, that's what they expected. Oh, it's Ben Moody, it's Rocky Gray, it's John LaCombe, it's Carly Smith, and, like, it's a super group. And it didn't sell all this stuff. It still did okay. I mean, 200 something thousand records is right around there. I don't yeah. know the exact number. But um, but then they, because it didn't sell a whole lot, it's like, oh, no, you're done, you know? And if you want the rest of your music, that you paid for recording, you paid, you made this music and brought it to the label. And you you can have it back for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something like that. Like right. you're gonna buy our music back, you know? Like yeah. there's so many songs on there, so many songs on there that would have been amazing if they had to put out proper singles. 
So, you know, it doesn't matter if it's professional or some Joe Blow on the fucking internet. Like, keep on you, you, you gotta love the, the industry these days, man. It's, it's, it's awful. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, well, you've learned how to navigate it. You just stay on all that shit and do it. Yeah, I mean, you, you you stay the fuck away from everybody, and that's your best bet, you know. Yeah, I mean, on the unicorn. Yep. Yeah, I guess we're both in the same boat when it comes to that, you know. Yeah, but you you got a great. Yeah, I, I always say it like I think you have a great business model. Your business model, is like you know what you need, uh, how long to be home, how long to be away from home, and you know what your bills are and your family. Like it seems like it works. Like. I, I saw you back there in the tour bus, man. You're back there just doing your books, writing your shit down, you know, taking care of yourself. And I'm like, this dude has got it under control. That, and it actually made it super comfortable for me because I'm like, for once, I don't have to be the guy, you know? Like, yeah. It was, that, was, that was one of the best parts of it. Yeah. It's really yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's definitely one of those scenarios that I wouldn't even be doing this anymore if I didn't wear like 800,000 hats, you know, it's, it's the only yeah. the only way to survive, I guess. You know. Well, you know, you can take that knowledge if ever you need to, and teach other people how to do it, and then that can be your hat. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know what you're doing. You you built that, and I know it works because it works for your brand. You know what the value of your brand is. You don't overvalue it or undervalue it. You just you hit it just right. You know? Yeah, I de definitely don't overvalue it. It's. It's, well, uh, I mean, that's not an insult. You, I hope it didn't sound like one. Oh no, 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 dude, no. It's okay. it's the it's the truth. You gotta you gotta know you gotta know where you are. You know, we're not yeah. we're not in the we're not in the demanding green M and M phase of the career right now. You know. Yeah, but what you're doing is that sustainability that you get whenever there's this is the thing that you do. This is the thing that obviously you do way more than that in your life, but this is the thing that people know that you do, and it's, it's you can monetize that shit, and you do it. In just a way that you can live your fucking life, you know. And if you try to go out, it's like, oh, you ain't paying me all this money. We're not coming. You know what I mean? It's not some bullshit. Like yeah. Got it all like that, so. Yep, it's true. What did Amy Lee's dick taste like, man? I don't know, but I could ask around. Uh Lord. Probably like your dad's. <laughs> uh, Damn, people are gonna start tearing each other apart, man. I thought she was yeah, talking about just, my daddy for a minute. I was about to get mad. <laughs> just, you gotta, you gotta let them eat each other, dude. Sean's a business genius. Stop sucking his dick. Okay, I can see that. Okay. I, I don't know about genius. That's how ch how challenging is it to play an eight string guitar? Do you do you have an eight string? Yeah, I got I got a couple of those uh, Stephen Carpenter ones from ESP. Um, oh shit! For me, for me, it wasn't. I mean, obviously, I already had a bunch of baritone guitars. I don't need eight strings to be too low. You know, the the it, main reason why I even had them in the first place is so I could play multiple songs on stage without changing guitars since there were so many different tunings. Right. Uh, but it sounded that particular guitar though. It wasn't because it was an eight string. It's just for St. John. It just sounded the best. You know, there was just something about the wood uh, that first act, da -da -da -da, da -da -da, or the, actually it's a pulsing thing. It had more of a, a hollow sound to it. Uh, all my other USB sounded a little too tight for that. So that was the first one. It wasn't the amount of strings though. And it wasn't difficult because I only played one string. <laughs> right you're just chilling on the low it, yeah. is it is it two is it two strings lower than a six or is there a lower and a higher as well uh no no yeah it's a lower and a higher That's it. Uh, okay so you've got a you got an even higher than the high e string yeah and and that's another reason why i don't need it man because i don't spend too much time up in that area you know? yeah dude i i can't even imagine what i do with that that extra string just watch all these new bands today, man. All these kids got their eight, nine, ten, whatever fucking strings. They got guitars just like wrapped around the whole fucking body, and they play it, and it sounds like a video game. I'm like, how the fuck did you learn how to do that? You know. <laughs> well, and and they're just playing to their own CD anyway. They could just stop playing altogether and fucking. <laughs> it sounds exactly the same. I mean, I mean, I agree. I, I dude, the 
the uh, the concept of having to you know play an instrument and, and be a band on stage is just gone now. I feel like everyone's just jams to their CD, and if their if their laptop went down, the show would just be over. You know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously because I came from Evanescence, we had tracks, but when we were doing Machina, that was the type of band that really wouldn't have needed the tracks had we had another guitar player, but I didn't really want to have, I just didn't want to add that other politic into the band. It just felt right with the four of us, but we had some tracks, and every now and then, man, it's because the way we ran them was like off of a, a, a iPod, Rocky would play the iPod, he'd count us in and keep us in time and stuff, and every now and then, man, something would happen, dude. And it was just go away. And I'm like, oh man, there's a big section coming up right here that nothing is fucking going on, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, it's like when that moment happens, and you, and you get through it. You know, you're just like, whoo! I don't ever have to feel like that again. So you know, I think running tracks is probably what, a bad idea. <laughs> would it go down and then come back, or would it go down and then you had to like it, reboot reboot it? No, we had them like. What would happen? Something would happen. In, Either he would get out off time or there would be a glitch or whatever, which I wouldn't say Rocky would get off time. Actually, that motherfucker's never been off time in his life. But he, something would happen, and he would alert me probably, you know, that something was going on because we would, it would sound immediately like, hey, man, we don't sound as awesome as we thought we did. <laughs> we just sound like a, a garage band at this point. Um, right. But, but I would cut the songs up so that each song had its own track. And we made the mistake early on of, like, saving the whole show session and then if it went down you're fucked you know so we started going to each song and we'd just be able to get into the next song <laughs> the next song is like ah, we sound awesome again it's not trickery at all it's not witchcraft we sound this good dude There's backups and no one's singing <laughs> the, 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 you know it's one thing though to have you know the, I think the track thing has been has been big for a long time but I, I feel like nowadays oh, yeah. These bands are just like, I mean, the reliance on the tracks has gotten to just such a degree that, I mean, that, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if the vocal's even real anymore. You know what I mean? I don't know what's real. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Are you talking about like bands that you are literally seeing live or stuff that you're just referring to like from maybe the internet? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to like, I prevail. And like these these bands like that, that it's just like. Uh, but I'm saying you were physically you, when you're physically around their their show, you're like watching their concert, not on a internet. Is that what yeah, you're yeah. Because I, I don't go out that much and see bands and stuff. I mean, I've seen a couple of bands, but it's like Deftones and stuff like that. I didn't really notice anything going on there. But you know, yeah. I don't know if it's like rampant or not. But I know like the hip hop crew, they would do it. They would sing over their vocals. But I know why they do that. It's just because it's easier. But like with bands and stuff, I, I don't know how bad it's getting. You probably have a lot more experience with it since you play all the time. Yeah, it's it's just it's gotten bad, man. It's yeah. gotten real bad. <laughs> this makes you want to go pray about it and shit. Like, Please stop. <laughs> I know Anthony when he does his stand up, he's uh he's doing it to backup tracks. You're not really telling those <laughs> jokes, right, dude? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I lip sync to comedy, right? That that actually might be kind of kind of funny to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, that would be do funny. you like tour around? You tour around constantly doing comedy. That's is that your gig? That's what you do. Trying to. I mean, like it's working. I mean, summer's looking good, but I mean, I, I hope it keeps going. You know, so oh, so yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to, man. You know, I just imagine that's like a really hard thing to like get into because you don't have anybody else on the stage you know it's like you just gotta be fucking funny i can be funny like talking to you guys or hanging out with people so if i stand on the stage with people i just feel like i'm gonna leave now you know yeah that must be a weird weird thing to just be up there alone and and the pressure is fucking on you know mm -hmm. i like the adrenaline Make you have to like uh yeah I, I like the adrenaline and being able to just like talk to whoever you know it's, it's like uh it's fun oh shit. Yeah, i guess i guess it's that's a good be. question so, As a, wait what's the question here who's it in man that's a that's a long is this who's that for that's for you Oh, 
right. You're a grandfather? Uh, yeah, my daughter. <laughs> yeah, my daughter. She, uh, she has my, my granddaughter, Marley, and actually Logan. I'm a double grandpa. So, You're a double grandpa now, huh? Yeah, because uh, Bethany and her oh. wife, they, they had another child. So we've got Marley and Logan. So I've got, yeah, i got two grandkids. Um, were, were you super young when uh, when your daughter was born? No, I was like uh, 21, 22, something like that. I get, I mean, I, maybe that I, that is super young, I guess, but not like, yeah. you know, I fucked up in high school. And some shit. Right. right. I just turned, <laughs> I just turned 50, like in March. So, Dude, happy birthday, man. Yeah. So thanks, man. I, I'm old enough to have some grandkids, I think. I think for my wife, though, it's like people, they say she's a grandmother and she's, she's not 50. <laughs> they're like, how you got all these damn kids? That's crazy. They're almost as old as you. I mean, being a being a grandparent, it, it it's not really like a like 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 my grandma was sixteen when my mom was born, and my mom was twenty when I was born. So my grandma was thirty six when I was when I was born. So yeah. it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're crazy old. You know, it's it can no, happen. Man. I ain't tripping, <laughs> but uh. As far as that question, I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave that question hanging. How is it better? I, I didn't. I don't remember exactly what it said, but how is it better for me to be? Thank you, Cody. I still yes, have no idea. I'm looking at it. I have no idea what it means. I'm just like, uh. <laughs> it's like it's too many words to even digest. I'm just like, uh. I got it. Yeah. Right. You know the joy, the, the joys and the trials. That's that's one of those things that can happen. Uh, and you don't enjoy them and you don't use them for what they are when you're being a parent. Because when we're all when we become parents, man, you're basically your grown up kid self and you're trying to figure out a way to make this other human being be responsible and safe. You know? Um when you're coming from a place where you haven't been responsible and safe in your life, to have that job immediately is uh that's a, that's a tough learning curve. But once you get to know them. Talk to those kids and find out that they're interesting motherfuckers that you just want to fucking hang out with for the rest of your life and realize that they trust you and depend on you. Uh, that's whenever you really take those kind of instances and turn them into something new. I know that's very deep. It's like an after school special. No, that's what they want. <laughs> I mean, that's what they're asking you, man. Yeah. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome to time to answer, man. The people love those stuff, man. Cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, get. Mm. Give me some more blockbusters. I don't know. I was like, the question popped yeah, up. I'm like, man, yeah, I want to know, Sean. <laughs> One second. So, is this your thing, Sean? Like, you and him are, this is the partnership now, like for the podcast, or is this just a fun thing you guys are just doing? Anthony's already had this show for yeah quite a while. And uh, sure. he, actually he actually interviewed me, and uh, we just we just kind of became friends. And then he's like, hey, you want to you co host? <laughs> he's just eating now. You want, yeah. He's like, he's like, hey, you want to co-host with, you know, we're interviewing, I think it was Billy Carson was the first, the first I one I jumped on. Yeah, and then we, uh, we, we, we just kind of co-hosted or, or I guessed it or whatever. And then we just started yeah, kind of doing that from I then mean, on. And yeah, that's cool. Uh, that was the, I think that was the last communication I had with Ben. Um, cause we have, since he did come to Ben Moody, since he came to the house for that, that show that we were talking about earlier, um, I've been staying up with him, you know, and we haven't done that in a long time. And he used to be really into doing the podcast thing. Like, you know, he literally wanted to be Joe Rogan, like before Joe Rogan got big, you know? So he right. like, bought all the shit and he was doing podcasts and stuff. And I didn't pay attention to it back then, but our reconnection, I was like, dude, it'd be dope if we did one, you know? So the last communication that he had with me is like, are you still down with that podcast, man? Because I got all my stuff out of storage. So maybe we'll have it. Nice, dude. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's it's uh, it's an interesting and fun thing to do. You know, it's like, you know, just like you. I mean, how many times have you been interviewed by some fucking chode that just asks you the worst questions ever? And you're just like, dude, this interview is so boring and awful. And that's and so why I made not boring and awful when they do that that's why i used to get banned from actually doing interviews because i was like seriously do you want to hear is that what you want to know or do you want to know some real shit and i would tell them real shit and then i'd get grounded from fucking doing interviews <laughs> but yeah i know what you're saying <laughs> what was that 
No, I know what you're saying. You know, it's like they can get points. You know, questions like this is a completely different situation. Right? It's not like an interview. It's more like just dudes hanging out. You know, it's and, and that's and that's like uh, that's the appeal. You know, it's it's like uh, it's fun to interview people like you and 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 others and just and just shoot the shit and and in a comfortable setting where it's not like so what's how did you come up with your band's name what's your yeah. craziest tour story you know and the same well, that's the same that's why i get questions. glued i'm sorry i, I always interrupt man that's how i get glued to like joe rogan stuff man because it it's usually pretty interesting conversation yeah no matter who's on there because it's it seems like it's so chill and comfortable and open like there's no expectation on either side of like what either one is wanting like oh we got to take this minute to talk about your fucking you know your beard stuff or you know your, your stuff that you sell or whatever it's just it's a conversation man and i think people miss the fuck out of it. i know i do dude because i get locked in like i will listen to a four hour fucking thing you know it's like just listen to people like chat it up and talk about some real shit most of the time yep. saying some shit you probably never even thought about before you know just because you talk to somebody about it. it's like therapy really Honestly. Yeah, dude, it's it, it's it's enjoyable. You know, it's uh, we've we've interviewed some some pretty pretty good characters and interesting people, and and uh, it's just a fun thing to have on the docket. You know, every week, and uh, you know, it's it's interesting to juggle it out here, but it seems to work out, and I definitely enjoy it. Anthony I enjoys you know being quiet and eating with his cowboy. He does, house. man. I, I do enjoy this. I know what he's up there. The podcast is my favorite. <laughs> I just know what he's shut up. It's like, like you guys are in bands. People want to hear, hear about stuff. I'm, I'm just like, I, mean, I think people want to hear what you guys have to say more. Like, so I'm just like listening, you know? But, the way I see it, like from where I'm sitting, having watched this the whole time, and, and thank you, Sean, for pointing it out, that he's just eating right now. I was thinking, <laughs> man, this dude, this dude is like, he is building up. To some, he's gonna drop some shit on me here in a minute, dude. He's fucking eating. He's getting fucking prepared. He's like studying it right now. And then in a minute, whenever you're done talking to me, he's gonna say something to me. And it's gonna fucking like cancel me. Is that what's happening here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So I think he's just he's just doing his thing and eating his. What, what are you <laughs> yeah. eating there, dude? Oh, white I castle. Just, I love, you know Is what that, Oh, dude, you're eating white people, castle. Sean. <laughs> yeah. You can't just trust people, Sean. You know that. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. Dude, right, so is White Castle is White Castle paying us today, Anthony? No, but they fucking should be, man. For that, they should. You <laughs> just you just put he's, the. He's gonna be he's gonna be paying for the White Castle later. Yeah, yeah. White Castle makes you pay. Yeah, you're gonna have to get some fucking like heartburn medicine. Yeah, I'm just starving. And now, some but... extra so fucking not. toilet paper, dude. <laughs> Free promo <laughs> <for> fucking White Castle. <laughs> so, so, Anthony, is your show in Kansas City tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Where are you playing? Uh, uh, Comedy Club of Kansas City. What's it called? Oh, it's called the Comedy Club. Comedy Club of Can uh, the Comedy Club of Kansas City. Yeah, I think. Nice, so, dude. Don't go. I'm gonna don't go. If you're watching. Do they show. spell it with a K? Is it comedy with a K? Three Ks. Three. <laughs> I knew Kansas. that was cool. dude. I, I've been there. That's a yeah. Kansas Comedy Club. <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna tell some really cool jokes there. You should tell some liberal jokes when you're at the Kansas Comedy Club. Page. It depends on who I'm talking to. I just try to piss off the opposite opposite crowd every time. Like pretty much like just push. Try to piss off right. the what? The opposite crowd every time. Like if I go to oh, Republican yeah, yeah, City. Yeah. If I go to the Republican City, I'm like, man, Fauci saved the world, dude. You know, I love Biden, you know. And then, like, and like it was like a liberal crowd. I was like, double down, like Trump, man. He's fucking awesome, dude. And, I mean, I was, I was like, <laughs> just, to, just to fuck with him, man. I was like, basically. That's what comedy's all about, right? You gotta push buttons. Oh, yeah, and... everybody. Find somebody to fucking piss off, dude. Somebody That's right. You. Oh, you're offended. How do you decide which venue you should play at? So uh, I don't, I don't anymore. So, so gentlemen, I should probably get going because I, I got to drive us 130 miles yet tonight. Oh shit, man! Yes, I got to. 
Yeah, that's you know you know the drill. Dude. <laughs> I already I literally have a love scouted already. So we're supposed to. We're, we're we're traveling from uh, uh, Cleveland to Fort Wayne, Indiana, and fucking gotta gotta hit that truck stop to sleep. So. Fuck yeah, dude. Gonna pound some coffee and get hit get on the highway and uh, got a bunch of bullshit to do tomorrow. Why? Well, I, I do appreciate you guys having me on here, and I hope it. Was, yeah, thanks uh, for coming on, bro. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Anytime you ever want to holler at me, man, let's just do it again. It was pretty fun. That's a good time. Sounds good, dude. Glad you enjoyed it. Like I said, Give it's Ty, very casual, you know. Give Ty some love for me, man. I will. I yeah, will definitely. Man, he's a beautiful human being. He really is. <laughs> I will. I'll tell him you said what's up. All right, man. All right, you guys take care. Anthony, have a good show, man. Hey, too, man. Bye. Later. Is it still you and me?